A group of professional robbers have taken over the royal mint and are printing 8 million euros of real money for themselves every hour. Today we will recap the story of the 2017 series Money Heist. At the beginning of the first episode, the girl wakes up, alarmed by the sound of a police siren from the TV. She is on the run after a failed bank robbery and the death of her accomplice and lover. When a police officer shot her lover, she had to turn from a robber into a murderer. Now her photo is in every police station throughout Spain. Hiding isn't in her nature, but she still has one last thing to do. She calls her mother from a phone booth and asks the woman to go outside, unaware that the police are watching her every move. Right when she was about to fall into a trap, a car pulls up to her. The driver warns her of an ambush waiting for her and shows pictures of the police surrounding her mother's house. The man invites her to take part in a special robbery. He is looking for people who have nothing to lose, and then offers them an unimaginable amount of loot, 2 billion 400 million euros. Intrigued, the girl agrees to the deal. The man, who calls himself the professor, recruits a team that is going to be preparing for the robbery of the century for the next five months. He brings them to his house outside the city and tells them the details of his plan. The professor thought it over carefully to the smallest detail, so that neither the people involved in the robbery nor their children would have to work another day. He warns that the members of the group aren't allowed to give out their personal data or start relationships with each other. Everyone chooses a new code name for themselves based on the names of different cities, and so the girl becomes Tokyo. The professor's chief assistant is Berlin, who has previously committed 27 major robberies around the world. Mr. Moscow started as a miner, but then he realized that he would achieve more by digging up. He is an expert at using a gas cutter and any industrial tool, which he uses to break into expensive shops and banks. His son Denver has also joined him. He specializes in substances, knocked out teeth and broken bones. Rio, Tokyo's favorite, is the Mozart of the digital world. He knows everything about alarms and technology but nothing about human relationships. The Helsinki and Oslo twins are an example of brute military force. Nairobi, who is a hopeless optimist, has been counterfeiting banknotes since the age of 13, so in their team, she is responsible for quality. And, finally, the professor himself, no criminal record, no documents, no traces. To everyone, he is just a very smart ghost. Since his robbery plan doesn't include stealing anyone's money, the public will be likely to side with the robbers. The professor promises that they will become heroes for the people, and their robbery will be talked about on all the news. But to achieve this this, not a single drop of blood must be shed, otherwise they will become outcasts, and they will be robbing the royal mint. After months of preparation, the team, dressed in red jumpsuits and wearing Salvador Dali masks, goes to work. The professor knew that there was only one way to get into the coin and stamp factory full of three tons of equipment and weapons. The team must get into a truck entering the mint with new rolls of money paper ready for printing. To intercept the vehicle, they need the national police uniform. The group blocks all communications, blocks the road, and stops the police car escorting the truck. Berlin changes into the police uniform and asks his partner to act casual. Meanwhile, a school bus with students from the British College is going to the museum at the factory. One of the students sits by herself and occasionally glances timidly at the school hottie Pablo. He catches her eye, sits next to her and asks her out. The girl immediately agrees, and they kiss. Disguised Tokyo and Nairobi also arrive there in their car. They must find a girl among the students, who everyone calls Lamb. The police car with Berlin passes the checks and enters the territory of the royal court. The students prepare for the tour and get accredited to visit the museum. Meanwhile, the secretary, Monica, informs her boss, Arturo, that she is pregnant. The police car and the truck enter the factory. The lifts start heading towards the truck. Monica catches up with her boss, who clearly doesn't care about the news about her pregnancy. The man is annoyed because he has a wife and three children. He also doesn't believe that the child is his, as his own children were conceived through artificial insemination. Rio informs the team that the alarm has been disabled. As the lift approaches the truck, the thugs in jumpsuits and Dali masks jump out of the truck. They instantly grab and tie up all the staff. The students begin to run around in panic, but Lam is not among them. She and her boyfriend have their first date in a factory toilet. Pablo persistently flirts with the girl, which makes her feel very awkward. When she refuses to go all the way, the guy suggests taking a picture in such a memorable place. Right before they take a picture, he tears her bra off her chest and mocks her saying that now she will become famous throughout the school. The girl desperately tries to take away his phone with the incriminating photo, which helps Tokyo find the couple. The group puts black masks on the hostages. Then the robbers take off theirs. Berlin greets them and apologizes, assuring everyone that they won't hurt them. But everyone will have to hand over their phones and tell their passcodes. He calms some very panicked women and tells that he will protect them, since they are also a part of their plan. Meanwhile, Moscow and his son open the safe and discover a lot of money. Denver is delighted and calls himself and his father the best. Moscow humbles the boy and says that he hasn't achieved anything yet to call himself the best. They were lucky that the robbery plan was thought out for them. Now they will get a chance for a better life and will no longer go to jail. 
Berlin asks Monica to answer the phone and say that the factory is closed for technical reasons. The woman lies so believably that she gets praised by Berlin. 20 minutes after the break-in, the robbers establish an analog connection with the professor. There are no other signals left inside. The doors are closed, the alarm doesn't work, and no one knows that they have taken over the Spanish Mint. Tokyo hangs all of the hostages' phones on a blackboard and thinks about last night. Rio visits her to talk about the upcoming robbery. He fears that things might not go according to plan. He is serious about Tokyo. Rio didn't get to buy a ring because they're locked in the house, but instead gives her an engagement medallion with his real name engraved on it. It turns out that all these months they were close, but the girl says that intimacy isn't love. Nevertheless, they plan to go to Tahiti when it's all over. But for now, they have one task for tomorrow, not to die. In the present, the professor orders the team to get ready to open the doors and turn on the alarm. The group stands in front of the entrance with bags filled with money and weapons at the ready. The hostages don't understand what is happening. Arturo tries to calm people down. Through the mask, he notices the bags full of money, which means the robbers will leave and everything will be fine. However, Berlin notices that Arturo is peeping. He removes his mask and intimidates the man. The robbers remember the professor's instructions. The most important thing is for the police to not figure out what they are really doing. They must believe that they only came there to rob. And once the shooting begins, the robbers will have no choice but to go back into the museum. The police must think the team is trapped. The professor's plan was calculated down to a minute, but Tokyo suddenly makes a move ahead of time. According the plan, she needs to go out, leave the money at the entrance, shoot in the air and come back. But the professor didn't instruct her on what to do if the police shoots first. They wound Rio. Tokyo opens fire on the police, and then drags the guy back inside. Denver and Nairobi cover them and shoot at the cops. Thus, the professor's plan not to shed any blood has failed miserably. Tokyo, in tears, rushes to the wounded guy, but the bullet only has slightly scratched Rio's face, and he survives. Tokyo's accomplices yell at her for messing up the whole plan. They are surprised that this happened, since they trained so much before the robbery. Berlin orders to switch to analog communications. The professor asks Tokyo if she's having an affair with Rio. She denies it and says that she was just protecting her partner. Detective Raquel Murillo arrives at the scene and gets a report about the situation. There is only one good news, the police survived, but the cameras have no signal, and the fiber optic cable has been cut so that they can't be hacked. Meanwhile, Berlin gives Rio a questionable lecture on love. Having survived five divorces, he is convinced that a woman is good only until she gives birth. After that, she loses all attractiveness, and the child becomes more interesting to her than the man. So, he thinks the guy should drop his romantic plans of marrying Tokyo and get ready to work. He orders him to get Lam, take her to the office and not leave her even for a second. The operational headquarters is deployed at the Mint. Raquel is unhappy about the presence of the secret services, but their representative explains that the place where the money is printed has now been taken over by the people with weapons. After several attempts, Raquel is able to get through to the professor. He asks her about the well-being of those who have been shot and is very happy to hear that everyone is alive. He apologizes for his metallic voice and asks for a helicopter so they can fly to Brazil. Out of nowhere, the professor asks what Raquel is wearing, as clothing can say a lot about a person. She could answer the question, but there are a lot of serious people present. She lists everyone who is currently listening in on their conversation. Deputy Police Inspector Angel comes to the phone and the professor offers him to get acquainted with the whole team. He speaks to everyone very politely, which confuses those around him. The professor asks to give the robbers some time, because a few minutes were not enough time for them to leave. They are well armed, although don't want complications, so it's better for them to think the situation over. Raquel asks to let the children go, and the professor again inquires about her clothes. The woman says she is currently wearing a grey suit, a blue blouse and high-heeled boots. Everyone is appalled by his behavior and calls him a psycho. He has taken more than 60 hostages and still flirts with the negotiator. Raquel orders the helicopters to circle over the factory to keep the robbers on their toes. The colonel tries to piss her off and starts talking about her personal problems. He insists on the assault. Raquel is against the idea because the assault can lead to the death of the hostages. In the office, Rio guards Lam and she asks why he brought her here. He tells her he wants to protect her and asks her to wear a red jumpsuit. The helicopters are circling over the factory, and the snipers are taking their positions. We are shown a scene from the past at the professor's house. The team discusses what they are going to do with the money. Denver wants to buy a sky-colored Maserati, a martial arts school and a three-story bar. He plans to get donor lungs for his father, as they are completely ruined by smoking. Berlin has more sophisticated plans and wants his own winery in Pravadia. Tokyo wants to buy an island, which gets everyone's approval. The professor says that even if they buy all these things, they will still have a lot of money left, so they need to dream big. Moscow wants to record an album with ballads and, as requested by the team, sings a song with his son. 
In the present, Berlin orders the hostages to take off their masks and announces that something unexpected has occurred. But, despite the helicopters, they will be given a couple hours of rest. He says that they will distribute sleeping bags, food and water to everyone. He also asks everyone to change into the same red jumpsuits as theirs. Arturo reports that there are disabled people, pregnant women and teenagers present here. He asks the robbers to let them go. Denver yells at the man, suddenly gives him a gun and demands to shoot him. Arturo refuses to shoot, so Denver points the gun at him and says that it's either shoot or be shot. In the end, the man agrees to shoot the robber, and, with a shaking hand, pulls the trigger. But no shot followed, and the gun turned out to be fake. Berlin reports that fake weapons will now be distributed to everyone, as they will need them in a few hours. Their job is to obey and trust them. People obediently begin to change into red jumpsuits. Raquel is informed that the police have not traced any radio signals. The woman is puzzled about how the criminals communicate with the boss. While on a smoke break, she sees armored vehicles with special forces driving into the factory. She is furious and once again tells the colonel that there will be no assault. He takes her aside and informs her that the order came from above, because there is a very important person inside the factory. Alison Parker is the daughter of the British ambassador who is also a friend of the Queen of England. Therefore, the military has no choice but to go on the offensive, otherwise the whole world will talk about it the next day. In the past, the team is training. The professor shows a photo of the girl and informs the team that the assault will be necessary. The police will be convinced that the robbers won't be aware who is present among the hostages. They will also be sure that they will be able to hide it from the public. Therefore, the special forces will enter the building on the first night before dawn and it will be even better if they hurry with the assault. In the present, as the professor foresaw, the colonel convinces Raquel that they must enter the building immediately and get the girl out unharmed. In the meantime, the hostages, all dressed in red jumpsuits, are sitting on the floor. Arturo tries to talk to Monica, but she ignores him. Nairobi sympathizes with the woman, as she has studied each hostage and has an idea of who the father of the child might be. She confesses to the robber that she has decided to have an abortion. The assault teams are in full combat readiness. Inside the museum, a ring echoes, and the professor informs the team that the SWAT is ready to enter. Berlin announces to the hostages that the time has come and they need to follow his orders. The state security forces are acting as expected. The SWAT team plans to enter from four directions. The main door, the loading area, the emergency exit and the roof. Lined up at the door, the robbers are waiting for them to come inside. The command to action follows and the special forces drill a hole in the door, sticking a video camera through it. Right at this moment, Allison Parker's call is broadcasted on live television. The military attempts to stop the call fail. She tells what is going on inside and that the hostages are dressed the same as the robbers. They also have weapons and masks, and they don't know who is who. The girl asks not to storm the building, because the police will not be able to make out who is the hostage and who is the robber. In confirmation of her words, the police receive a picture of people all wearing red jumpsuits. Raquel is horrified, innocent people might be harmed because the thugs are mixed with the hostages. The assault is held back, and so the robbers win their first battle without a fight, thanks to pure wit alone. Nairobi goes to the hostages and announces the names of the people she needs. Finally, they proceed to do what they there came for. The experts are taken to their workplaces, since printing presses must work 24 hours a day without any stops or breaks. Only technical stops are allowed every three hours to change the ink. The robbers are filled with joy and enthusiasm. This is the highest paid job in history. Soon they will receive two and a half billion euros, and maybe even more. It all depends on how long they can stay inside. Frustrated, Raquel goes out to a cafe and tries to call home, but her phone is dead. All of a sudden, a young man in glasses turns to her and offers to use his device. She thanks the professor and takes his phone. She needs to make a couple of calls and leaves messages on her mother's and the inspector's voicemail. Raquel isn't going to be a puppet, and since the intelligence has taken control over the situation for diplomatic reasons, she intends to resign. The woman returns the phone to the stranger and is about to leave. Suddenly, the professor points out that her face is shown on TV and asks her how the negotiators communicate with the criminals who take hostages. Raquel says that their main task is to try to calm everyone down and buy some time to come up with a new plan of action. But in this robbery, the criminals themselves bought the time. No one will ever forget this siege of the Royal Court of Spain. The center of Madrid is blocked, and the broadcast from the scene goes around the clock. The cops are going above and beyond, trying to find a way to catch the robbers who are printing money for themselves. Never before has the phrase time is money been so accurate, as 8 million euros are printed every hour. 1,400 sheets of money paper are cut into 140,000 banknotes of 50 euros. Meanwhile, the professor controls the police walkie-talkies and 18 cameras, so if anyone attempts to set them up, his team will be the first to know about it. The accomplices take turns watching the hostages and guard the exits of the production site. The professor successfully uses the information he got from Raquel at the cafe. 
The robbers take Monica outside to read out another message in which she once again tells that all the hostages are dressed in red jumpsuits and are wearing Dali masks, so any attempt to storm the building can lead to tragic consequences. The snipers notice that the robber is standing next to Monica, as he is telling her what to do, and they ask permission to open fire, but Angel doesn't dare to give the order to take out the criminal. He decides to buy more time, and the robbers calmly return to the building. Berlin selects men among the hostages who have to do physical work. Among them are Pablo and Arturo. Even though Arturo is trying his best to get out of work, Berlin convincingly forces him to do it. He is nicer to the rest of the hostages and promises to distribute medicines and sedatives to anyone who needs it. The male hostages are sent to the basement, where Moscow gives them instructions. They will have to destroy the concrete with a sledgehammer and lay 48 meters of path to the sewer. Upon returning from their shift, they are forbidden to tell other people what they were doing. In other words, the hostages themselves organize an escape route for the robbers. Thus, the printing process went on without interruption. In 20 hours, the printing presses produced 52 million euros, so at that moment the team was sure that they would succeed. But it is only the calm before the storm. Soon things will go so awry for the characters that the group will come very close to failure. And the reason for it is a love story that is worth ruining everything. So what did you think of this series? Leave it in the comments below and if you liked the video please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.